This is going to be episode number 122, and this is going to be part of a four-part podcast series on how to accompany singers. Now, the reason we're doing a four-part podcast series on this is because in the end of June, we're releasing a new specialty course on how to accompany singers. This is going to incorporate all different types of music, pop, rock, jazz, gospel, slow swing, dirty swing, different types of blueses, all that good stuff. If you're interested on learning more about the release of this specialty course, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash singer jazzpianoschool.com forward slash singers and you will be informed about the release of this new specialty course it's going to be absolutely fantastic i've gone into the studio to record the backup tracks with the vocalists that they'll be available to use so you can actually play along with a lot of different types of vocalists a lot of different styles genres it's going to be absolutely fantastic so with that being said let's dive right into this episode All right, so the first thing I'm going to be teaching you guys and showing you guys here today is basically going to be about the two feel on the bass. So a lot of times when we kick bass, right, what we want to do is we just want to we just want to walk. We just want to walk bass, right? So if we're if we're playing a tune, um, let me see what's a what's a good tune. You know, if I were a bell, right? I use that one a lot. You know, you might just start off with right. You know, stuff like that, just walking bass or, you know, um, what's what's another tune? All the things you are, right? And that's basically, I have a lot of reverb on my piano right now. I got to change that. That's basically how people accompany singers like for the most of the time and I had a singer basically hey can you call me up for a gig hey can you um can you accompany me and can you walk bass like well yeah sure but but basically that's that's not the best way you know that's not the most interesting way like I can do that all the time but there's so many great ways that can help accompany singers now the bass to feel is basically instead of feeling quarter notes boom 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 right if I'm walking Right? You're feeling every single quarter note pulse. With the two feel, you're only feeling two pulses. You're feeling one, two, one, two, instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Here's a demonstration. Right? That's a two feel. You're feeling doom, doom, So you're feeling a beat on one and three. But the reason they call it a two feel is because there's the, the pulse is only two beats, one and three, right? That's two pulses, one, two, three, one, three. So that is a two bass feel. That's what I'm going to be working with you today. So the first way to start out doing this is basically just we want to just really emphasize the beat one and three of our bass line, right? Now, in between this, obviously, we have comping, but the first thing we want to start out with is our left hand. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three three, four, and we can do this a lot of different ways. The first way I would recommend starting is just ones and fives or octaves. So we can go octave. And that's how I'd practice this too. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of different exercises and things like that in the singer and company course. But basically, this is the first way I'd practice it. Practice all your octaves with any tune that you're trying to learn. So if I'm doing all the things you are. So here's my two feel. Whoops, sorry, I didn't do octave there. Uh, so when you have two chords per measure, right? That's what hung me up there for a second. You have D flat, G, C. Basically, you're just skipping right to the next chord in that measure, okay? So that's octaves. Now we practice fifths. So a fifth of a chord leading into the next chord usually will always be an approach note um, into that next chord if, if the chords are set up sequentially kind of in a 2-5 or a 5-1 to one pattern, right? So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4... All these chords are basically resolving down by a fifth in this pattern. Obviously, if you have A flat to a B flat, going one, five, you're not going to be approaching down by a chord scale above, right? Here from C minor to F, we're approaching from a chord scale above with the G. Here's the C to B flat, right? F to E flat. But again, when the chords are out of sequence in a more modern composition, that's not going to be the case, but we can still use those fifths to approach those notes, or I'm going to teach you some other methods as well, okay? So the chord scale above is the best way, and again, this happens to be the way the fifths approach your notes, and again, in a 2-5-1, that's a really great way to do it. Now, just like I said, if you have chords that are all over the place, A flat major, B7, maybe to F major 7, sharp 11, going to E flat 7, or E flat sus, right? You can use chord scale above, which is which is essentially just using the note from the chord scale 
of the chord you're going to. So if you're in an A flat major, right, this might be the one or the tonic. So this would be an A flat major scale. You're simply going to use the B flat to approach the A flat, right? Since this is the starting chord, I'm simply going to start on the one. I'm going to a B7. Okay, so chord scale above in this case would be a C sharp. So I'd go A flat, right? And then my next chord was F, right? So I'm going to F major seven. Okay, and then my next chord was E flat. So actually F is my next chord scale above note going to E flat. So chord scale above notes are definitely, you know, these are bebop approach notes, but they can use them be in, in bass notes as well. The other way we can approach notes through our, our um, two field bass note is with half steps below. So I can use half step below walking up to a B7. Approaching the F from a half step below. And approaching the E flat from a half step below. Now again, obviously it sounds kind of out, it sounds a little strange, and that's because of the compositions. Now, when you're playing a more modern composition, right, you know, they're gonna sound kind of out. But again, as you start to connect things, it sounds a little bit better. And as you can see, if I walk E flat all the way up until the point I switch my chord, it's gonna sound a little bit better. I added that C sharp in as a chord scale above. But anyway, that's getting into more of a two feel for modern tunes, which isn't exactly what I was wanting to teach you guys today. So uh, back to our all the things you are, right? Going from octaves, now we can go fifths. Fifth, 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 fifth root, right? Fifth, root, fifth, right? Okay. So again, that's basically how we use octaves and fifths. Now we can combine them for our two feel. So I can you choose an octave, root. Maybe I use a fifth now. Root, octave, root. Now I'm gonna use the fifth again. Fifth, root, fifth, root, right, for the chord, octave. That's off the camera there, but down to C, right? So you can combine both your, le your left hand octaves in, in fifths to get that two feel. Here's just my left hand alone. I'm just switching up my octaves in my in my fifths. Right? This is going on. Right? So just switching it up. Octaves fifths. Octaves fifths. Now again you can use here half step below. So I could go Maybe I go to a chord scale above now, or a fifth, right? Maybe I go back to half step below. Maybe I go to octave now. Maybe I go to half step below, half step below again. So these are all the different methods and ways that you can start to combine, get a two feel baseline happening in your left hand. These are very simple approaches, right? So that's the first step. Just to break this down a little bit further to review, you have octaves, you have fifths, you have chord scale above, you have half step below. That's four different ways you should be isolating and practicing in your left hand two feel baseline, okay? So once you've done this, then you start to combine those components in separate ways, right? Combine two of them, combine three of them, combine two different ones, right? And you start to come get this little two field baseline walking line, right? And I'm only playing on one and three now. Okay, now if I revert back to kind of more of a more interesting two field baseline, it might sound like this. Now, what was I doing there that's different, right? We have a bunch of different types of stabs, movements, and lead-ins, okay? And these diff different types of harmonies are going to lead me into the next part two's lesson of our left hand, kind of, uh, you know, getting into uh, my what I call the switch and more of an active role, playing an active role. But just to keep things simple for this part one, this first lead-in here, right? So I go one, two, three, four, one. So the rhythm of one, three, four, one adds movement into our two feel. We can't just have one and three, otherwise that's gonna sound like a march, right? If I just play one, three, one, three, one, that's super boring. It doesn't, it doesn't contain the rhythmic value of jazz, right? So I need to add these little types of movements, one, two, three, four, one. 
So I'm just using one rhythm right now. That's one, three, four, one. Okay, so one. Now the, the voicings or notes we can use with these can be combinations of all the different things we've just isolated. Does that make sense? So we can use octave, chord scale above, root. Or I can go octave, fifth, half step below, root. I can go octave, fifth, uh, excuse me, root, fifth, octave, right? So I can go one, two, three, four, one. So I'm combining all the other components we've just previously worked on to make up that rhythm. One, three, four, one, right? All right, sorry. Now, obviously, you don't want to use that exact rhythm for the entire two-feel bass line. That's where, that's where more other rhythms come into play, like switching it up, right? That's another rhythm right there. One, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one, two. Okay? So just the act of adding this. So one, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one. So those little and ones, and I'm going to show you another one in a second, those little ands, right, really kick things into drive. Obviously, you can hear it's a little kick in the butt, right? It's like doom, doom, ba doom, right? You'll hear that on a bass player. Doom, doom, ba doom, doom, ga doom, ga doom, ga doom. They're adding in all these little ands. Da doom, da doom, da doom, da doom. That kicks things into motion. It's like driving, the driving force behind bass lines. And um, obviously, we're creating a two feel, but we don't want it to be so stagnant. We're just playing ones and threes. We need to add those little ands, right? So one, two, or excuse me, three, four, and one, right? So adding, before I was isolating the one, two, three, four, and one, but when we combine both of the rhythms I just showed you, remember I added, I, I showed you one, two, three, four, and one. I also showed you one, two, three, four, one. Okay, but when you combine that, we're gonna get this. One, two, three, four, and one. So we're combining both of them now. One, two, three, four, and one. Right, you see that? Okay, these are all different ways we can start to add different types of rhythmic values, approaches, and things like that into our left hand two, two feel bass line so that when we're copying, right? It's not just stagnant, it's not just one, three, one, three. Okay, do you see that? So we got a lot of different factors. We have two knobs basically we're turning and playing with. We have the um, voicing or approach knob for the different types of notes we're playing. So again, we can use octaves, fifths, chord scale above, half step below. I'd stick to that for now. That's a lot. That's one knob we can turn. Let's say we turn it to octave, okay? Then we have another knob, which is rhythm, right? So we I've only taught you three different rhythms, one combo, right? So the first rhythm is one, two, three, four, one. The second rhythm is going to be one, two, three, four, and one. The third rhythm is a combination of both, one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, now obviously we can we don't have to have the rhythmic value be after three all the time. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna go a step further here. We can have the rhythmic value be before three. So we can go one, two, and three, four, one. One, two, and three, four, one. Right? You see that? One, two, and three. Or I could go. Um, sorry. One and two, three, four, one. One and two, three, four, one. Now that's that's more of an advanced rhythm, right? One and two, three, four, and one. You know, something like that, right? But again, I don't want to get too crazy with it. If you want, just stick to the rhythms after beat three, right? Again, that I first taught you without doing any rhythms before beat three. If you're more of an advanced player, you can start to mess around with both. You can do the rhythms before beat two, before beat three, and after beat three. So sometimes I do both. I'm gonna go one, two, and three, and four, and one, right? One, and two, three, four, and one. Now that's getting very close into actually walking bass, but still contains the two feel because you're not actually walking every single quarter note beat. And that's where the, the fun starts to happen because you can start to mess around with that more. So with that point being just said, I'm going to lead into the last uh, portion of this uh, almost last portion, but it's more of an improv type baseline. This is getting into a teaser for the active role section. Now, for your two feel, 
I can actually have my left hand play more of a line. You know, boom, 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 boom. That's more taking like a lead in my accompaniment rather than just having it be walking bass, right? So I can actually create improv lines with my left hand while my right hand holds a chord. And I'm going to explain all of this in parts two, three, and four of the of how to accompany singers. And again, all of this is going to be in our launch and release of our singer accompany course in the next month in June. And again, if you're interested in getting on the um, release date and release information for that, just go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash singers, okay? But again, my left hand can take a active role in my comping, right? So it can go... Right, see how much movement and life is happening in my left hand? Now, am I gonna use this all the time? No, right? You need to always, always, always have a balance and contrast between all the different textures and methods I'm showing you here. That's what's going to sound the best. So I can't just use this all the time, right? I can't be doing this, all this, this stuff. The singer's going to look at me and be like, what the heck are you doing? Like, that's crazy, right? <laughs> so we can't do that. So we, but, but the point is if you add small little trace amounts, little bits of amounts of this kind of small improv line into your two feel, it's going to sound fantastic. Now, how do we start to actually start to implement that? Go slowly and pick spots where you can actually play a line. Now, the first, the first thing to do is actually you need to solidify the harmony. You're going to do that with your right hand by just playing the downbeat. So the way to practice this is to play all downbeats with your right hand. So I'm going to play one. Right? And then once you land, okay, uh, basically, uh, the, again, this is getting into more complex stuff called the switch, what I call I've deemed the switch. But you can play your next chord with your right hand. So I might go... So you're actually not finishing your line because if you do, your left hand is going to take over as the anchor. We don't want that. We want our always our right hand to be the anchor by playing the downbeat. So see what happens. I'll give you a little teaser into the switch is if my left hand plays the downbeat, my left hand will now be the anchor. My right hand is now the active role, which I'm going to be teaching um, in the, these upcoming podcast parts. So if I go... Right, see how my active role is switching back and forth? We don't want that just yet. I don't want to teach you guys that yet. So your right hand is going to be the anchor all the time to practice your left hand improv line. You can play anything in your left hand. I'm basically outlining the chords for the most part. I'm, I'm improvising with my left hand. I'm using five sevens. I'm using approach note. I'm using diatonic walking. Again, it's basically all diatonic lines in, in made up rhythms, whatever you want to do, right? I love using quarter note triplets. Um, that's a really cool rhythm to use, right? So do. I love the quarter note triplet feel. You again, you'll hear Gerald Clayton use this a lot. He does this with his bass lines a lot. Again, if you can use more, right? You can do lines like that. You know, whatever it is, you know, depending upon your skill level, but you can keep it simple, right? You can just do. Sorry. You know, just mess around with it, mess up around with the improv component, okay? So besides that, your right hand, just to leave things off, your right hand's looking to comp in the space. Obviously, when you're using more of a two feel, your right hand's staying sparse, it's staying light, um, but you do want to have some holds and you want to have a nice balance between short and long, right? If you watch my right hand, if I do all of this, there's no swing to it because my right hand's playing all downbeats, right? Your right hand has to get some short comps in there as well. And as opposed to if I do this, if I play all short comps, it's going to sound weird as well. That sounds strange too. I'm playing all upbeats, all short beats, right? You always, always, always want to have a balance of 
contrast and textures, right? Between short, long, and your holds, you know, through everything you do, right? So here we go. Here's a nice balance. Sorry. You know, whatever it is, okay? So work in isolating those components alone and you know, work on each knob, like I was talking about, work on your um, harmony knob, your note selection knob, your approach note knob, right, which is going to be one of them to move into the different types of harmonies. That alone is going to be difficult for a lot of you, right? If you got that down, start to work, if you're more a medium, uh, intermediate to advanced player, start to work on your other knob, okay, which is going to be your rhythm. So you can start to combine them with different rhythms. You can move all over the place using different types of rhythms. Start to add in your left hand improv lines, right, using your right hand as an anchor. You know, doing different stuff like that. And then finally, start to get in some of your um, your right hand comps there. And again, I, you always want to have that contrast. So the two field doesn't have to be so exciting like I'm doing. It can be very sparse, right? You can play more of a one feel. Light. You know, whatever, sorry. Uh, so again, always, always, always go for that balance. Isolate the different components. And again, this is the first texture that I'm going to teach you in the accompanying series. So again, everyone can walk, or I shouldn't say everyone can walk bass, but I want to teach people in what the singer company course teaches people is just to get away from always kicking bass, right? That's only one texture. That's one method of accompanying singers. That's one method of how you can actually comp. And for solo piano too, that's one method of, of just of kicking your solos, accompanying yourself for solos, right? You know, I can do that, you know, that's, that's just one little way. I mean, there's so many different variations of accompanying yourself, accompanying singers that I'm gonna get into. I'm gonna get into the switch, right? So you have all these different types of movements, rhythms, voicings, harmonies working for you while you're comping. So again, that two feel is just the first part of it. Then you got the different types of switch. You got the one single measure switch. You got the in measure switch I'm going to be talking about. And again, all of this stuff, all the practice exercises is thoroughly detailed and structured in the how to accompany singers for all different types of tunes as well. So again, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash singers to get on that um, release date and launch date list so you can get more information about that. But I hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Um, this is just a completely a whole new system that I'm bringing to the game and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it um, because it can definitely lead to really, really great things in your playing when you are playing with singers. All right. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next podcast lesson and happy practicing. 